All right, welcome to this video where we will be talking about uh, using ADFS for web app authentication using JWT. So I'll be talking about the JWT token itself, why it has more advantage over other authentication method. What all do you need in terms of steps to configure your app for ADFS authentication with JWT. And then I'll talk about this complete authentication flow where we will see how a user access the application and then how that, that goes to the ADFS and all that authentication flow, right? So starting with JWT, it's J stands for JSON followed by web then token. So JSON web token, it's an open standard RFC 7519 for securely transmitting information between parties uh, as a JSON object. Where it is used? Primarily it is used for authentication and authorization in web apps and APIs. So uh, if you talk about the regular apps that we have on-prem or let's say in cloud, uh, it's really easy to integrate them using SAML authentication with ADFS. But when you talk about the web application, because it might be a dynamic application where uh, let's consider the example of a banking app where initially the user might land up on a dashboard and then from there in he would like to go to let's say the accounts page, fixed deposit page, credit card page within that application itself. So all that uh, authentication and authorization flow along with uh, the token management, how that can be done with JWT, this is what we will learn today. Uh, again, talking about JWT, uh, it is quite compact, self-contained, and it can be digitally signed, uh, which makes it quite a popular choice for token-based authentication and authorization. Now, the steps that we talk about in terms of making this whole uh, you know, process complete is first you install and configure the ADFS server. So with that, uh, you know, it is very important that uh, you are able to connect your Active Directory, uh, you know, Federation service to the domain controller, and then it can authenticate the user against it because that will be a very important step. Second is to configure the relying party uh, trust. So here, what we are trying to do is in ADFS, you need to create a relying party trust for your web application. This is where you will define the details of your application, including the token type, which in our case will be JWT, followed by uh, you know, allow, allowed client URLs and few other similar properties. The next step for you would be the registration of your application, where you will register your web application with ADFS as a relying party. And you will provide the details like the application's URL, again, token format, that is a JWT, and all other relevant settings. Once that is done, we move towards the last step where you do the implementation of authentication. So in your web application code, you will need to implement the authentication logic where you have to redirect users to the ADFS login page for authentication and handling the response after the successful authentication. How would you uh, also, if I move forward to this authentication flow diagram, there will be a step where token validation would be done by the web app. So all these uh, implementation goes into the fourth step that is implementation of the authentication, right? Now let's move to the authentication flow. Here, the first step is where user access the website. So when a user access your web application, the application uh, in the second step uh, redirects the user to the ADFS login page for authentication. So this redirection is typically done through an HTTP POST request containing the necessary authentication parameters. Now, once uh, this ADFS login page is available to the user, in the fourth step, user enters their credential on the ADFS login page. Uh, these uh, authentication of the user credentials goes to the ADFS server, where in the fifth step, the ADFS server since you have already conf configured the communication between ADFS server and your domain controller, which is your uh, Active Directory. So in the fifth step, the ADFS server does the validation of the user credential with the Active Directory, right? So if this is successful, I mean your username and password, everything is correct, then a JWT token is uh, generated, which contains the user's identity information. This JWT token is passed back to the uh, web application in step number six, if you see there is a token and this JWT token is given back to the uh, uh, to the uh, web app, which requested the initial, uh, you know, uh, user authentication. 
So this is also called token issuance, right? So this is in response to the authentication request which came from the web, web app itself. Now comes the part where token validation is done. So in the seventh step, uh, upon receiving the token, the web application will validate its signature and other claims to ensure its authenticity and integrity. Here you can use ADFS public key or certificate to verify the token signature, right? Now, once the token is validated and uh, your application can extract the user's identity and perform any necessary uh, authorization check, here in the eighth step, these authorization check would be done to determine what resources the user is allowed to access. So if I'm coming back to the same example, if this is a banking application, uh, based on the user's uh, authentication authorization information, this web app would be able to know what all pages should be visible to a user. Because um, let's say if this is not a regular customer, but in fact, it would have been a employee of the same bank, then they would have got us a very different login page or a different, uh, you know, app to altogether. So that authorization is done in this eighth step. Now, with this, the authentication flow is complete, but there is another thing. Now there are subsequent API calls within the application itself. Uh, so, I mean, once the user lands on, let's say your dashboard, then user might navigate to other pages like your fixed deposit page, credit card, uh, account statement, and all other different things. So here, since that in the eighth step, you not only authorize the user, but also send back the JWT token to the user so that every time user now makes another request, he brings that JWT token along. So what happens here that you can include the JWT token in the request header to authenticate the user. The backend of your web application then can validate the token on each request to ensure the user identity and permissions. For, so with this, uh, you don't have to go you know, in a very uh, different manner to get the user authentication done every time. It's a JWT token where on the server side, there are no sessions that you have to create, no sticky session and other requirement. It makes it quite very easy for you to be able to authenticate the user and take through the complete session for the user. Now, if we talk about JWT, so it can be used for single sign on and cross domain authentication scenarios as well. They allow, this allows the authentication to be performed by an identity provider like ADFS, OAuth server, like we have seen in this example. And uh, then it's also stateless. So in a stateless manner, server don't uh, need to keep the track of the token or session state. This can simply, uh, this can all, of course simplify the server side implementation and make it easier to scale. Otherwise, uh, what happens is in an enterprise level, the scaling issue is there when you have to see the session based cookie or the stickiness because there are so many session information that the server cannot actually perform and this is now delegated on the client side because every user for the uh, each single request is bringing the token along right thanks for joining i'll see you next time